Riotan L09, 3940 HS, 32 gigs, one terabyte. This has been out a while. My experience with Riotan is more on the industrial embedded PC side, but these are on Amazon for six to $700, depending on the configuration. And it's a 7940 HS. We're at an interesting crossroads between Zen 4 and Zen 5. This is Zen 4, but Zen 4 for a home server or Proxmox or a home lab or something that's gonna run some sort of virtual assistant, Zen 4 can make a lot more sense than Zen 5. It's a, it's a lot better situation generally than Intel with mixed P cores and E cores. Yeah, I mean, you look at the, you know, the i5 based things, you get like maybe two performance cores and four to eight efficiency cores, and that can be okay. Zen 5 isn't bad. You could get four performance cores and four compact cores, but these are different. These are, it's a very different approach that AMD is taking. With the Zen 5 C cores, it's still the full core. It's still full functionality. It's just clocked lower and with lower power delivery. It's a, a design optimized for efficiency. And because it's optimized for efficiency, like the power wires are smaller on the silicon lithography among a whole bunch of other changes that aren't needed when you're not gonna clock at five gigahertz. But you still have some other cores you can clock at five gigahertz because as a practical matter, you weren't gonna be able to clock all those cores at five gigahertz anyway. So they don't actually need to be physically homogenous even though from a software execution standpoint, they are electrically homogenous. This is different than Intel's approach. But Zen 4, they're homogenous. Electrically, silicon lithography, the whole nine yards. So you don't even have to worry about it, it just works. And that's what makes it attractive. And that's what makes it run so fast. Oh, and if you wanna go off script with Zen 4, check out the custom motherboard I ordered from AliExpress. I did a different video on that. Built my own NAS, 3D printed. That's right up there, cause Steve did that. Thanks, Steve. In the box, you get the Retin Alloy 9. Another nice thing was Zen 4, upgradable memory and storage. This thing has dual 2280M.2. Two front USB 4 ports, we'll give that a try. At the rear, we've got our air vent, two and a half gig LAN, dual HDMI 2.1, and four type A ports. This mini PC also has a USB configuration that I like. Although I maybe would have liked to have seen a type A port on the front of the machine. Uh, four type A ports, not bad. We do not recommend customers to remove the CPU cooler themselves. Improper disassembly may also damage the motherboard and the CPU. It also reduces the liquid metal sealing tightness. Warranty service is not caused. So you can take the bottom off, there's four screws. This is a little bit of an English thing. I asked for clarification. So there's four screws or four feet you can take off here, pop the cover and you get a fan and you can see the memory. And you can take a few more screws out and you can get to your M.2 slots. Now there's a 2280 M.2, which in our case was equipped with a Lexar one terabyte. And then there underneath that, you've got your Intel AX210 Wi-Fi adapter. Then you get an empty 2280. So you could add a cheap, you know, four terabyte NVMe or add another one terabyte NVMe without taking the one that you've got in there, double your storage, uh, and also removable memory. Our shipped with crucial memory. Crucially, ah, see what I did there? One of them has a heat sink and this thing has airflow, which is the thing I like to look for on many PCs. So the other nice thing of the design that I liked, it's a metal case. That's exciting. Now you might be throwing up your oatmeal on the monitor, screaming at me to say, this would not make a good home server platform because where are you gonna put the storage? You're gonna splash out and get a four terabyte NVMe that you're bottlenecked behind a two and a half gig LAN? That doesn't even make any sense. And I would agree with you. You didn't even need to spit out your oatmeal. All you really need though, is something like an Asus Store, USB-C, 10 gigabit, a drive interface. That'll give you four slots. Then you put this on top of it, build the brain, ta-da, you've, you've DIY'd your NAS. If you're feeling really adventurous, let me introduce you to Thunderbolt Networking. It's a USB 4, it's a PCIe tunneling. You can actually use this to fully connect three of these nodes at what is effectively an 18 to 22 gigabit interface. And both of these ports would give you an internal 20 gigabit connection between all of those nodes, which is great. And then each one of them has their own two and a half gig connection to uh, the rest of your network. And then you can use a type A port for storage on each of them. You could do a full Ceph cluster and with 32 to 96 gigabytes of memory in each one. This is an amazing home lab. It's an amazing home lab because this thing idles at 10 watts of power and the out of the box power profile is 93 watts, but I'm gonna recommend that you don't actually use the default power profile, you actually set it to the performance power profile. 
And the reason for that is because the cooling solution on this particular mini PC is quite effective. It's not very loud when it's at the higher performance profile, and it performs really well. Speaking of good performance, let's take a look at our Geekbench numbers and the performance that you get in Windows out of the box, because it's a perfectly reasonable desktop compute machine. The Radeon iGPU on this is also no slouch. You can actually play games at low, medium low, 720p, 1080p. It's a best in class single chip graphics gaming solution. None of that is really new for the 7940HS. If you're curious about your particular game, you should look for game benchmarks for the 7940HS. I'm happy to report this chassis does not bottleneck or have any other thermal issues. In fact, I think the thermal situation on this chassis is best in class. It seems like they're using the metal chassis to help dissipate the heat, as well as drawing air in from both sides and exhausting it out the back. It seems to be a pretty large fan in the top, and then there's a second fan in the bottom. I always want to see a design that cleverly uses like a single large fan because theoretically that should be less maintenance, but they didn't do a bad job here. This thing also has a built-in microphone, a TRRS headphone microphone combo port, and then a reset button that you've got to use a paperclip for. Not bad. The power button is just a power button. It's not a fingerprint sensor or touch sensor or anything like that. So nothing fancy on the loadout kit here. Some of the mini PCs have been adding bio sensors, which is really awesome. And you know, that even works in Linux these days. So speaking of Linux support, Linux is a dream on this. You could run Arch, you could run Bazite, you could run Nobara. You could run a lot of stuff on this and be basically be good to go with Steam. The peripherals and the interface and everything else works here. Uh, the USB 4 functionality on Linux, got a couple hoops to jump through, but mostly it's plug and play, so that's good. The BIOS is also a simplified BIOS. This looks really similar to the Minis Forum BIOS, in fact. I think they might be a similar manufacturer or similar ODM. It would be nice and a competitive differentiator because there are people buying this for Home Lab and everything else if the BIOS were available with more unlocked options. Of course, you're gonna get randos in there doing random things and then that is perhaps more tech support. The other dark side of this is BIOS options and BIOS support. Minis Forum can sometimes be a little tricky to get BIOS updates after the fact, but for machines that typically have a lifetime of like two, maybe three years, how important is getting a BIOS update? And this is something that uh, competing companies have been improving. Riotan has some BIOS updates listed on their webpage. I emailed support sort of anonymously incognito, and they said this model doesn't have any further BIOS updates from what I have, which kind of implied that maybe there was a BIOS update because this has been on sale for a while. So if you already have one of these, maybe you can get a BIOS update for it. Uh, generally, if you just randomly install a BIOS update to try to fix an issue blind, maybe the fear is that's going to create more tech support headache. But I don't know. This, the fact that there's basically the same BIOS, I mean the board layout, like if it was an identical motherboard, we would have an identical port layout on the back in some other mini PC. And then maybe it's like, oh, there's a shared BIOS update and you can get that. But that seemed not to be the case either. I'm not really sure. I definitely would recommend when you set up one of these that you don't actually log into your Microsoft account. Like that's kind of an anti-pattern Microsoft. You do realize that like the, there's a strong incentive on somebody to go rogue in your office supply company it's like, oh yes, you'd like to buy a new laptop or a mini PC or an Amazon seller. They can add malware to the device. And then it seems like the normal part of Windows setup. But then they've got control of your Microsoft account. Whereas it's like, oh, let's, uh, let's do some scans. And do... It's actually really hard to do virus scans on the running machine. Like you, you can't have a really sophisticated virus that lives in memory outside the, the view of the operating system and it lies about scanning the disk. Um, and so scanning it with another operating system, also not foolproof, like taking the storage out and scanning that, but you at least have a better shot of t detecting malware. So messing around with this thing, I did run into one Achilles heel, and that is the Wi-Fi antennas are located here in the bottom front edge of this. And so that means that if you're gonna use a Bluetooth keyboard, like this one, which is kind of ancient, from Microsoft, it's gotta be kind of close to the machine. Uh, the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi reception on this don't seem to be particularly good unless you turn the machine upside down. It's actually dramatically better if you turn the machine upside down, which is interesting. Unfortunate Wi-Fi antenna placement. It might have been good to have a cutout or maybe do something with plastic. 
I'm not really sure, but I love the metal case, but it's not great for Wi-Fi reception. If you have any questions or I miss anything, hit me up in the forum. Don't forget to at me. Sometimes I miss things. All right, I'm signing out and I'll see you there.